Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week I've got an extra special art supply box from Joggles to open with you. And once we find some good stuff inside, I've also got some inspiration for color combinations for you. This is one of the questions I get more than any other is how do I choose color combinations and where do I get my inspiration? So if you've got a few minutes, let's go check it out. It's always fun to receive a box in the mail from Joggles. It's always good stuff in there that you just get excited about. And sometimes by the time the box comes, you don't even know what's in there. Or maybe you remember one or two things you ordered, but there's other things in there as well. So I thought that I would unbox this with you before we got started so that I could show you the items, the products that we're using in the video today, and also build a little bit of excitement since um, they're new things. So this is from joggles.com. And if you are not familiar with joggles, they are a small family owned mixed media supply company based out of Rhode Island. And I have been working with them for a couple of years, designing my stencil and masks. And then we also did some foam stamp designs and I've done other projects like the printed rice papers. And I have future projects with Barb. Barb and I are working together like peas and carrots. We are just bouncing ideas off of each other and coming up with great new concepts. And it's very exciting to work with Barb. And um, I am excited for the future things that we have to show you. We've got some wonderful things coming down the road this year. And um, But for right now, let's figure out what's in this box. So the first thing that's in this box is... A brand new, pristine gel plate. Why do I need a new gel plate? Well, this is my new favorite size. This is the 9 by 11 gel plate. And I only have one of them. And so Barb so generously sent me a second one because for me, with the amount of gel plate printing that I do, I love to have extra supplies so that when, it, when one is dirty, I have another one. Um, this is my new favorite tool being that it's nine by 11. It is a really good fit for the nine by 12 stencils and masks and the nine by 12 pad of rice paper that I always use. So here is a brand new nine by 11 gel plate. Next up is a pad of my favorite rice paper, my nine by 12 sheets, 48 sheets of rice paper. And this is also now stocked by Joggles. Barb has added this to their inventory just because I love it so much and to make your ordering easier. So now when you order your 9 by 11 gel plate and your 9 by 12 stencils, you can get your rice paper from the same place and we can put it all in one box. And lastly, Mirror, mirror mask from the Gustav Klimt One collection of stencils and masks that I designed for Joggles. So we've got a pristine mirror, mirror 9 by 12 mask. And that is a box of wonderful goodness right there. So the mask and the rice paper and the brand new gel plate. What I'm doing today is I'm also going to be incorporating from the Gustav Klimt inspired first set of stencils and masks. I'm also going to be using the leaves stencil, the rectangle motif mask, and the spiral repeat mask. So in every set of stencils and masks that I design, I try to design at least one that I consider to be a layering mask. And in this collection, it's these two. It's the rectangle motif and the leaves. They are layering masks because they are simple geometric patterns that layer well with these other organic swirly patterns. And you know that the key to successful gel printing is layering, layering, layering. 
But when I inspire you to do so many layers, the biggest question that I get is, how do I decide what colors? If you are asking me to make three or four layers, how do I decide what colors? That's always the challenge. We talk a lot about the translucency of golden fluid acrylic paints and how they layer, whether they're translucent or opaque, but we haven't really talked a lot about color combinations and color inspiration. So I am going to pull out my layering mask. Here's rectangle motif. Here's leaves. Here's our mirror mirror. And here is our spiral repeat. We've got the paper and we've got the gel plate. And then the other tool that I love is my six inch Speedball Deluxe Brayer. Six inches covers the plate with just a few swipes. You really don't want to be working with a two inch brayer trying to cover the big nine by 11 plate. This is so much easier. Then I always encourage you to have two brayers. Two, I know that seems indulgent. However, when we are working with colors that are across the color wheel from each other, opposite complementary colors, red and green, blue and orange, yellow and purple. These colors can contaminate each other and we don't want contaminated color. We don't want our yellow to get contaminated by a little bit of blue or purple that ended up in the brayer and now is rolling into the yellow. So I'm gonna use two brayers. I'm gonna use one six inch brayer for my cool colors and one six inch brayer for my warm colors. And then that way there won't be any cross contamination and I don't have to do an amazing job cleaning the brayers as long as I stay with one for warm and one for cool. So it's a worthwhile investment to have two six inch speedball brayers and barb has ordered the brayers into joggles as well so you can get your entire order with links below the video at joggles.com and how cool is that one stop shopping okay so if you're not familiar with this rice paper pad i want you to know that it is sized on one side that means it's nice and smooth on one side and it's rough on the other side when you open up your pad of paper, the smooth side is facing up towards you in the pad. It's facing up and that is the side you wanna put on the gel plate. Why? Because it is less likely to stick because it is nice and smooth versus the back side, which is slightly rough. Also, the smooth side will pull almost all, if not all of the paint off the plate because of the surface. So you want to use the smooth side. And the other thing I love about this rice paper is it's very durable. This is not thin rice paper that's going to tear when you go to pull it off the plate. This is nice, durable rice paper that works wonderful for collage because it is absorbent. So that means it absorbs the glue and it lays down nice and flat and it is really nice quality paper. So that's why I love this pad. I, um, I use it exclusively. Okay, so the Ranger Dina Wakely 9x11 coming up. Be careful not to crack your clamshell like I just did in my excitement because you do want to store your gel plate back in the clamshell. Okay, the, the, uh, the rule is take the brochure out. Take the Mylar sheets off. These are part of the manufacturing process. They are not meant to stay on the gel plate. They can, if in the right conditions, they can stick to the gel plate. If it's hot, um, I don't know. I've had them stick to the gel plate and you don't want that. They're part of the manufacturing process. Pull them off, but you know what? And then the gel plate, when you're done with it, goes back in this empty naked clamshell box for storage. Okay. This is never going to be this clean again. So let's have a nice, good look at it. Okay. Um, these sheets, the Mylar sheets that came off the front and back, they are wonderful for layering between your stencils and masks to keep them from tangling and so that you can see what you have. I actually go one step further and I clip these to the Mylar 
and hang them on a hanging system that I have devised in my studio. If you're interested in the hanging system, just check out my YouTube channel. I'll try to remember to put the link down below. Basically, the swivel clip attaches both the mask and the mylar together, and I hang it on a wooden or a metal dowel. And then the mylar between the sheets allows you to overlap them partially and then you can see them and you can see what you have. So when you overlap them, even when you overlap them partially, when you're hanging them, you can still see through the mylar sheets and you know what you've got. So that's, uh, a, so you can save these two sheets of mylar from your gel plate for that. You can also buy the mylar in a pad and, um, that is a Duralar pad and that link will be with that video. Okay, so without further ado, color combinations. How do you get color combinations? Well, I want you to think about inspiration from things around you. The One of the places I draw inspiration for color combinations from is my wardrobe. Think about the patterns and color combinations that you have in blouses, in scarves, in socks. Or if your wardrobe is not inspiring you, check out fabrics that are in the fabric store or on tea towels or on your furniture or throw pillows. There is endless inspiration of color combinations if you look around you at things that appeal to you. I find that my wardrobe is a great sense of color combination inspiration. I've got great socks that I love for their colors and they are Soulmate socks. Here's one. Soulmate socks have wonderful color combinations and they are made out of 100% recycled cotton. So they're good for the planet and they're good for your feet. But anyway, this color combination has inspired me and this is one of the combinations we're going to use today. We're going to be using teal and red and Payne's gray. I'm using Payne's gray because I never use black. This is pretty dark, but I'm not totally convinced that it's black, especially after it's been washed a few times, it's a little bit lighter. So Payne's gray is going to be our black for this project. You can see by the swipe that's on the front of this container that it is bluish black. It's pretty darn dark. And so that's our black today is Payne's gray. So here's my sock. This is going to be the color inspiration for one set of prints. And it wouldn't be fitting if we didn't include Klimt. So since the stencils and masks of the Gustav Klimt one collection, and you know there are two collections, the recent number two collection just published not that long ago, but if you haven't looked at the one collection, you have to check those out as well. So again, here is the Gustav Klimt inspired first set. So, and here is the second set. So in this a beautiful Klimt scarf that I got for Christmas from my someone special, I've pulled out some colors looking at, again, potential Payne's gray for the black, but I don't know if I'm going to include that. I'm definitely looking at this lovely kind of cranberry red color, the gold, of course, and this really nice brownish gold color. And this very interesting sort of greenish gray color. That's a lovely neutral. And I thought this would be a great color combination as well. So I'm being inspired by my socks and my scarf, a couple of items from my wardrobe. So let's hope that we don't get any paint on this lovely scarf. I'm going to just set it aside so I can be inspired by those colors. And then my sock. I don't want to get any paint on that either and that color combo so let's unwrap this brand new mirror mirror mask from joggles and 
and a brand new gel plate is going to be very sticky. We want it to be very sticky, but that's definitely why we want to use a nice sturdy rice paper because a thin flimsy rice paper with a brand new gel plate is going to be a recipe for sticking and tearing. So let's set this beautiful pristine gel plate down right in the middle of where you can see it. And let's start with the lightest color in our color palette. And I'm going to start with the sock because it's a simple three colors. So we'll get to the more complicated um, Klimt color combo second. So I'm going to start with the lightest color here. So I've got two teals here. So I, do, I have three colors, but I basically have four because I'm going to do two teals. So the first one is teal with some white. And that's our lightest color. And we're going to work from light to dark. Always layering from light to dark. Because most of the golden fluid acrylic paints are translucent. And so they will show through one another in the layering. So... Teal is not a translucent color. You can see by the paint on the front of the container that you cannot see the tick marks, the little black tick marks that are underneath the paint. You can't see them at all in the teal and they're, they're semi-opaque uh, in the white. But to show you the difference, here's the cadmium red. They're sort of semi-opaque in that, but you can really see the black tick marks through that. And there are other colors such as uh, metallic that Golden considers opaque. If you turn this slightly to the light, you can still see the tick marks through this, but a little bit of a thicker layer will really um, be more opaque. So I digress. We're going to start with the lightest color in this palette, and that is going to be teal with a little bit of white. So I'm going to squeeze some teal out on my brand new plate. That might be a little much. And then a little bit of white, just to lighten it up a bit. And then I'm going to take the brayer that I'm designating for cool colors and blend. So in order to blend two colors, like teal and white, or blue and yellow to make green, when you're blending on the plate, you want to make sure that you take the brayer and you stir it and then roll it out and stir it. You really have to swirl it around, otherwise you'll get a marbled effect which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but when you want to blend one smooth color, you want to swirl it and then roller it out. Now, there's hair on there. Now, when you have a brand new gel plate, the paint is going to bead up on it a little bit. That is because there is oil in the gel plate, and when it's brand new, that plate is going to release a little bit of that oil, and you're going to get what we call blooming. You see the blooming? This will go away. It's like once you season a cast iron pan, this blooming will go away and the paint will go on smooth. So we'll just roll that out again to get a nice smooth layer. And we'll look at my sock. And I think we could add a little bit more white. We don't want to have too much paint, but swirling and then rolling. Stirring, swirling, and then rolling out. I think that's a little closer to my color. So I'm going to take my smooth side down and print. And because this gel plate is 9 by 11 and not 8 by 10, we are going to get nearly a full printed sheet of this rice paper. Hardly any extra that doesn't have color. And that's really what you want because when you are paying for a 9 by 12 sheet of rice paper, you don't want to be throwing away multiple inches from your eight by 10 plate. And you'll notice how I pulled all the paint off with the smooth side of this rice paper. So I don't even have to clean this plate to get to my next layer. I am feeling like this is a little dark, but the tip for that is now I'm gonna put white on the plate and I'm gonna take the brayer with the blue paint that's already in it, the teal, and swirl and roll and I'll get an ever so much lighter teal just by using the paint in the brayer and a little bit of white on the plate. Now that's probably a little closer to this color, isn't it? Yes, it is. So we'll roll that out and we'll grab another piece of the rice paper with the smooth side facing down. And 
and we'll pull all the paint off with this lovely paper. And you can see here, I didn't do a complete swirling and that's what I mean by modeling. You'll get a little bit of inconsistency in the color when you don't swirl it enough when you're blending. I don't mind this at all, but if you're looking for a smooth, solid, blended color, that's why you need to swirl and roll, stir and roll, okay? So in order to make this sheet a little lighter, I'm just gonna roll my brayer off to clean it on this and not really worry about it. And always remember to store your brayer flat side on the desk facing up so that it doesn't stick to the table or transfer paint to your table. But this is my nonstick craft mat surface and everything wipes, washes off of it, including paint, varnish, you name it, it wipes down clean. That's why it's clean every time we make these videos so that it's not distracting. Something tells me I should probably protect my sleeves. Okay, so the first layer then, when I use layering stencils and masks to create complex prints, I do the geometric layer first. So on this one, I am going to do the um, rectangle motif, and that's going to be the first layer for the sock color combo. So my next darker color in the sock color combo is going to be the full strength teal, which is a little darker than this teal. So we might have to do a little bit more blending and it doesn't need to be perfect, but we're gonna put teal and then a little paint spray, just a little. I might regret that, but we'll find out. So. Again, stirring and rolling and stirring and rolling. Um, that's a little darker. That's probably pretty good. A little bit more of that. Mm, I think I'm gonna put a little Van Dyke Brown in it to sort of uh, neutralize and dull back the teal because this is a dulled back teal. So a little Van Dyke Brown. You can see the blooming again on the plate. That's gonna just continue to happen uh, for a little bit. Okay, swirling and rolling. And I'm going to add a little bit more teal to that. I'm just trying to get the darker second version of the teal color, which is a little less vibrant and definitely darker. So now I've added a little bit of Van Dyke Brown and a little bit of Payne's Gray. And I'm stirring and swirling. And now I've got pretty close. I could do a little bit more blue, Payne's Gray. Really, you just need a slightly darker version of the teal color. That's probably pretty good. Look at that. That's really, really close. So that's Payne's Gray with teal and a little bit of Van Dyke Brown. I love Van Dyke Brown for darkening down and desaturating colors, okay? So we've made a darker teal that matches the sock, and this is going to be our second layer because it's going to be the second darkest and we're going to do that with the rectangle motif. You could argue that the red is in between the darkness of these two, but either way, I think it's going to work just fine. So I'm going to take that nice light teal and layer over the rectangle motif. Whoops, I'm sliding. That's what happens if you have too much paint. Now you have to be careful when you're blending um, and adding and adding and adding paint, it starts to get to be a lot of paint when things slide around. When you do just one color out of the container, you have a nice thin layer and you don't worry about that. But when we're adding multiple colors to blend, you have to be careful about using too much paint. So this probably shifted out of register a little bit. No, I think we're good. So we're going to... Make sure we get a good connection with that. And here we've got the two teals from the sock. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift this up and grab the ghost print onto that first sheet. So it worked out that we had two sheets because I'm gonna grab the ghost print onto the first sheet. And there's still a little bit of a ghost print left. So I'm gonna pull that off onto this sheet.
And there we've got some interesting patterns going on in our two teals. So the next color is going to be the red. So I want to make sure that I get all of the teal off of this plate. So if there's any wet that's left, hopefully it'll transfer on the here. There we go. Pretty clean. And the red that I'm going to use is going to be cadmium red. I think it's pretty good in terms of the sock red. I don't think I need to darken it down. We'll see. So now I'm switching brayers so that I don't contaminate my red with this grayish blue. And I'm gonna roll out a nice thin layer of the cadmium red. And then we're gonna come back with the spiral repeat and add that over our double teal rectangle motif. So now we're layering an organic swirly mask over the pattern that we created with the geometric straight lines of the layering mask. So a nice layering combination of patterns and colors inspired by the socks. So now we've got a beautiful red layer on there with our two teals. And we're going to grab the ghost print from this. We're going to lift that up. And we're going to transfer the ghost print onto the other ghost print sheet. And we have a second sheet of that color combo. And I'm going to use this cleanup sheet to just grab what's left. So we can get back to a clean plate. So now we've got two versions of the sock color combo. And our last layer is going to be the Payne's Gray for the dark. So with the Payne's Gray... I'm going to come back to the rectangle motif and put that over the top of the spiral repeat. So for that dark Payne's gray, I'm going to come back to my blue because this is a cool color brayer. It's got a little bit of teal in it, so it's lightening up the Payne's gray a wee bit. So I'm just going to put in a little bit of Van Dyke brown to sort of darken that back down stirring and rolling and coming back to a nice rich dark nearly black color again inspired by the socks we're going to come back with the rectangle motif on top as a layering stencil for the spiral repeat we're going to put that back on top We're going to take a peek and make sure we got good contact with the plate and good pattern before we remove it. And here we've got a beautiful complex print of teal, two shades of teal, red, and the dark from the sock. Here we've got our ghost print, which we can transfer to the second print. This one is, of course, a little duller and less intense in the red. Let me clean this plate off. But we can always come back with some nice bright red on the top using the warm color brayer. and adding the spiral repeat pattern again on top. I 
I love the layering of this. It's darker than the socks because the, the teal ghost print covered a lot of area, but I really like the layering on that. That's really, really lovely. And there's a lot of red paint left here. I think we could also consider putting red back on top of this one, but mm, I like the red. Let's see. Let's put the red, see if we can get some leftover red here. Okay, that brought some more red and I've got a ghost print here. I'm gonna put that on the cleanup sheet. which is making a, yet another interesting print, the cleanup sheet. And then I've got an idea for this. It's gotten quite dark. So I think that I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that my teal is an opaque color. It's one of the few light colors that will go over dark because it is opaque. So I'm gonna make that light teal color again and come over one more time with a layer on the top of the rectangle motif or the spiral repeat. Let's make... Let's decide. So we're going to swirl this around. Get it in that nice light teal value. And bring back some light to this because we've got a lot of red and a lot of the dark color. So let's bring back some light. And I say we do it with the spiral repeat because why not? So we'll put that on here. And now, because it's opaque, it's blocked out all the lower layers and given us a whole different effect with the red and the dark showing through the teal over top. I really like that. Look at that. Totally inspired by the socks. And now we've got still more paint there. We're going to add that to this one, our second sheet. And here we've got a second beautiful sheet. This one is actually more interesting. Well, not more, but the ghost print is always a bit softer and the first print is a little bit crisper with the edges. So this is a little bit more painterly and boy, isn't that a lovely color combination to go with the sock. So lastly, we've got a little bit of paint left on the plate that we can pull up the mask and add that to our cleanup sheet, which is serendipitously become beautiful just as a cleanup sheet. So we'll pull that off and we've got the teal over that. This one could have a water um, wash over it to get rid of the white, um, but it is our cleanup sheet. So I'm not gonna worry about that too much. But now I've got two beautiful sheets of paper inspired by my socks for color combination. Okay, so the second one we're going to do is the Klimt scarf. So let's take a sheet of paper and get this paint off. And I, of course, will use this sheet of rice paper as a base for something else. But it brings us back to just about clean, which is nice. And then we're looking at the Klimt scarf. So once again, here she is with the sort of a cranberry red, the gold, a golden brown, and this sort of cool greenish neutral color. So in that palette, starting from light, it's going to be the green neutral color that is the lightest. So we're going to use some Titan Green Pale and some Chromium Oxide Green. These are both opaque colors, you can see, because you cannot see the tick marks through the swipes of paint at all on the front of this. So um, this would be like teal. If we brought it back on top, it would block out everything underneath it because it's opaque, which was a pretty cool effect. So I want to achieve that sort of greenish gray. So I've got the Titan green and the chromium oxide and we'll see if we need to add any Van Dyke brown to it. I'm gonna take my blue cool color brayer and just roll it off on a clean sheet of paper 
to get the majority of that blue out, but I'm not worried about this cool blue color in there with the greens because it's not gonna contaminate it because it's also a cool color. If I had any red at all on my brayer and I rolled this out, it would contaminate my cool colors. This is why I love to have two brayers so I don't have to worry about cleaning so much. Okay, so here's our greenish gray. I think we could go with a little um, more of the Titan green pale. I think my scarf is, uh, I really don't want to get this in the paint. It's a little greener. I'm not sure what. Uh, we could add a little gold to it because gold is a uh, yellow base. That's a little better. That's making it a little greener and a little closer to the scarf color. I think that's pretty good. All right, so we're going to do two... light colored solid base sheets of this color. So here's our first one. It's a little darker than what I expected. Not bad though. So I'm just gonna do the same thing I did last time. Adding the Titan Green Pale, taking the color that's still in my brayer, stirring, swirling and rolling. And now we have a lighter version of that same color. and print. And we got a little bit of artifacting from colors that were left on the plate. I don't mind that at all. Now we're totally clear and it picked up a little bit of the other stencil, the red and the teal, and that's kind of an interesting for the base. So our next color is going to be in terms of value, darkness, when we work from light to dark, I think our next color is going to be the gold metallic, although that is opaque, and I think I would like to put the metallic gold on top so it can be sort of the bling cherry on top. So then if we save that for last, our next color I think is going to be the golden brown and then the cranberry red. So the golden brown, I'm going to use burnt umber light, which is not open. Okay. Burnt Umber Light with a little bit of gold mixed in to give it a little bit of a golden tone. So don't put out too much because you know that we're blending in a second color. And I'm going to use my warm color brayer. I'm going to roll it off to get most of that red out. And I'm going to roll together. It's got a little red in it still. You see, this is what I mean about contaminating. You roll it out on a clean sheet of paper, but it still always ends up with a little bit of paint in it. But because it's a warm color and we're working with warm colors, it's not doing what it would do if we brought green into it. So let's get a little bit more of the burnt umber in there. Stirring and rolling and stirring and rolling and making sort of this brownish. It's a brownish red. I don't mind that too much. We could put a little bit of Van Dyke brown in it to sort of get it a little more brown. Okay, so this is a nice warm brown and that's what we're looking for. So the first layer is going to be the leaves geometric layering stencil. And that's going to go over our first green gray. So now we've got this wonderful clumped leaves pattern in the nice warm brown over that greenish gray. 
This time I'm going to use a cleanup sheet to get the extra paint out between the triangles so that I get a real clean ghost print. So here's that cleanup sheet, just like we had from the first print. So now I've gotten the paint out of the spaces so we'll get a nice, crisp, clean ghost print. And we'll transfer that to the second sheet of the greenish gray. And now we have a nice ghost print. You'll see the blooming is still happening on the plate. Don't get too attached to it. It's a great effect, but it will go away. So now the cleanup sheet again to pick up this. So we come back to clean. And the next color that we're going to do is the cranberry red. So for the cranberry red, I chose quinacridone violet. I'm not sure if that's gonna be a little bit too purple. It's a little purpley. Um, so I'm gonna add a little bit of cadmium red to it. And I'm gonna come back to my warm color brayer. I'm gonna roll it out to get the brown out of it. But if there's a little brown in it, it's a warm color. Okay, this is a lovely cranberry red. It's just exactly the color of the scarf. So now we're gonna take the mirror mirror mask because this is an organic mask to layer with the geometric layering stencil. And we're gonna put that on our first sheet. No, no, this is our second sheet. Ah, we'll put it on our second sheet. And here again, we're getting nearly full coverage of this nine by 12 sheet of rice paper with this wonderful nine by 11 Dina Wakely gel plate. And look at that, beautiful with the warm brown and the neutral green. What a nice combo. And now again, I'm gonna take my cleanup sheet to get that extra paint out of the spaces. So now I've got clean in between. This is, of course, another interesting sheet, the cleanup. And now I'm going to have a really good ghost print to transfer to our original leaves layering stencil. I'm trying really hard not to get any paint on my scarf. The socks could be a little more forgiving. So now we have that cranberry red in thin lines over the brown and the neutral green. This is coming out really nice. And then I'm gonna use that cleanup sheet again to clean the plate. And then our next color is going to be the gold because it's opaque and metallic. It will lay over our uh, darker previous layers. So it'll really lay over this and that. We've got two totally different effects here, but we're really picking up the colors of the scarf. Okay, so now we're gonna go to gold. I'm gonna do the heavy gold on this one, I think. Let's see. So we'll put out the gold generously. I'm going to clean out the warm color brayer. And then roll out the gold, which is getting a little bit of a red tint in it, but that's much better than a green or a blue tint because we're all in warm colors. And then I'm going to use the, I think I'll use the mirror mirror mask again on this one. See how that looks. And put that over.
Now here we've got some beautiful gold metallic blended in with our scarf colors and layering with the leaves and the mirror mirror. This is really nice. And then I've got a ghost print. I'm gonna take out the paint in the middle. I'm gonna lift. Oop, I've got red that transferred from the back of my mask because it wasn't dry because we're working so fast. So that's interesting. It's not a gold ghost print, it's red. So I'm gonna pick that up with my cleanup sheet. This is getting even more interesting. I feel like it would be interesting with this green on it, but that's dry. So I'm gonna do gold again. And because Mirror Mirror is so prominent on this now, I'm gonna go over it with the leaves mask to bring back the triangle geometric pattern. I'm gonna get a nice layer of this gold metallic and this is iridescent bright gold fine. And I'm gonna come back with the leaves. You see that's still a little wet as well. So to get that lighter, drier, I'm gonna put the paper over it and it's a little humid and damp out here and the paint is not drying as quickly as it generally does. Okay, so we're gonna put this down into the gold and come back with our layers and add some great gold triangles. Again, we're slipping a little bit, sliding around a little bit because I added excess paint. If you, if you find that to be a problem, pull back on the amount of paint that you put on the plate. Metallic and titanium white uh, tend to stick to the plate a little bit. So the plate doesn't always release every bit of um, metallics and whites. And now I've added the gold leaves triangles back over mirror, mirror. And I've got now my greenish gray, my cranberry red, and my gold. And again, similar to the first print that we did, the greenish gray has gotten kind of really covered and it's not showing up as much. And because it's an opaque color, we can put a layer on top, just like we did with the teal on this print. So I'm going to take this out. I'm gonna transfer that to the cleanup sheet and get as much of it off as I can. And my cleanup sheet is looking amazing as well. And then I'm gonna come back with the Titan Green Pale and a little bit of Chromium Oxide. I'm gonna create that green neutral and I'm gonna layer that on top. And because these are opaque colors, even though they're light, they will definitely show up on top. And we added a little bit of gold to that to get it to be a little bit greener. So stirring and rolling and stirring and rolling. And then we're gonna come back and add the mirror mirror mask again and put that on top because it's opaque. It'll come on top of our other layers. And again, we have this beautiful layered print that is allowing the cranberry and the gold and the leaves and the mirror mirror to show through. Look at the complexity of this beautiful print. And we've got a cleanup sheet for this. And that took out, um, uh, wow, this is so beautiful as well. And that took out a large majority of the paint. And now we'll lift up and we've got the ghost print and we'll put that onto this one.
And look at that really beautiful complex print. Still some paint on here. I'm gonna grab my cleanup sheet one more time. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to add the dark, the black, because I've got all these wonderful colors, but that black is pretty prominent. So I want to add it in a small amount. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the Payne's Gray with a Van Dyke Brown to darken it down even a little bit more. I'm going to use my Cool Color Brayer. I'm going to clean out that green by rolling it off on a clean sheet of paper as much as I can. And then I'm going to make this really nice dark that's really similar to a black. But I don't want this to be heavy. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a ghost print. So I'm going to put mirror, mirror. Ah, it's got a little green on this side. All right, do it like that because that green's a little wet. So I'm going to put that down and I'm going to grab my cleanup sheet and I'm going to take the paint out from in between the spaces so that I'm left with a nice thin ghost print. So this is actually more green, but ooh, isn't that beautiful? This is our cleanup sheet. Okay, so that's dark. It's not totally black. I think... I think it could be a little darker. Let's go with the Payne's Gray. And let's get that a little darker. And do that again. So we're going to put the... Mask into the paint. I'm going to get a new sheet. Because I really like this cleanup sheet. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. So I'm going to use a new cleanup sheet. Just to take the paint out from in between all the spaces. So I have a nice thin line ghost print. I'm looking to just add a little bit of black. Not heavy. Okay. So. Isn't that lovely? That's going to be something fun. For another layering project. But here's a nice thin. Pattern of the dark, and I'm gonna put that over this one. And I've got another print, and I'm gonna put that over our second one. So here, I've got two beautiful, complex layered prints with mirror, mirror, and the leaves stencil. And I've got this beautiful, color combination that's inspired by my Klimt scarf. So you see, I've got all the colors from the Klimt scarf. Elements of my wardrobe, elements of your wardrobe. Look around yourself for color combination inspiration from things that you have purchased or incorporated into your life because you love the colors. So Aren't these beautiful? Happy Friday, and thank you for being here.